Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. And my guest this morning is um, Dr. Tui Mebawandu, a public health expert. A fine morning to you, doctor. Good morning, Yori. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've taken your two doses. Oh, yeah, I've taken ah, my two nice, doses. Nice, nice, ah, so nice. You, you, we, we, we're already seeing where this is heading. Um, the third wave is upon us um, by all accounts. Uh, it's referred to as the... Um, Delta uh, variant. And we're talking about this. Uh, we have other people, uh, other professionals on the line here as well. Uh, so, good morning to you, Dr. Madeli Boyo, public health consultant. Thank you very much. Great you could be with us. As well as Dr. Ajoko Amadio, the public health expert based in Ireland. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Um, okay, now. Uh, it, it, uh, let, let me start in, in, in the studio here uh, with Dr. Mebawadu. The Delta variant it is referred to, uh, that's what we otherwise are calling the third wave, right? Or is there something? Yeah, yeah it's responsible for the third wave. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's the, it's, the, it's the variant responsible for the third wave. The yes. third wave is like, you know, this is the third time we're seeing yeah. um, the, the upsurge in um, coronavirus numbers. And, uh, exactly. And uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Boyo, uh, this is coming in the wake of perhaps are uh, beginning to relax in Nigeria. Uh, people having a softer uh, mood uh, when it comes to uh, COVID-19 these days. Now the, uh, the Delta variant uh, is a case has been detected. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, by the end of the second wave, if there was even an end to the second wave, we had um, let our guards down. People were beginning to <laughs> move around. Parties that started, events, planners were on, on it, and weddings, burials, everything. And now we are, if I by about four weeks ago, we as doctors have begun to see things that looked like what was described as this third wave. You see, um, Dr. Madiobi, uh, we, whereas mm, to most of our people here, you know, maybe professional folk accepted, uh, to most of our people here, uh, they, they sort of had uh, de-emphasized um, the danger of COVID. God has been so kind. We haven't seen anywhere near the kind of numbers that are being reported around the world. And now we're hearing of the, um, uh, the Delta variant. Uh, tell me, Dr. Uh, Amadio B, you being based in Ireland, um, you've been grappling with this in your society for a while now? Um, yes, yes. Uh, we, we have a much smaller population, of course, and a little bit of a, a, a geographical advantage in that it's an island. Um, but yes, we are grappling with uh, the same uh, Delta variant. It's not as severe as it would be, for example, in India or places like that, but yes. It be it be a bit higher than in Nigeria. Okay, all right then. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Mebaudu, uh, talking about uh, Dr. Madi, you mentioned the word uh, severe. There, uh, in terms of severity, we are told that um, this particular variant uh, is more uh, virulent. Is it the word? It's in other words, it's much more contagious than we've been used to. You speak briefly about that, please. Uh, well, the, um, the variants actually, you know. Uh, the first thing we had was the Alpha uh, uh, variant, which started in UK, and then the, you know, the what we call the Beta, and then the Delta now, which actually started somewhere in India. Um, what we find out with the Delta variant is essentially that one, it is more contagious, 200 times more contagious than the, uh, the one we, we, we knew before. Secondly, uh, it affects younger population. So um, what has been our, um, our winning game before was because the population in Nigeria are younger, and then the, Fed, the Alpha and Beta were not actually touching them uh, so much. But this data variant you know, affects younger population. Mm. Thirdly, um, it, it tends to have a bit of resistance to this vaccine. But again, though the vaccine still protects against it, especially if you've taken the two doses, but it's a bit resistant. Okay. And I, fourthly, it causes more severe form mm -hmm. of the disease. Okay. So here we are. We have, we're having a quadruple whammy, you know, um, a more contagious, affects younger population, more transmissible, 
causes more severe form of disease. And um, we'll, probably, we'll come back and talk a bit more about that. Um, I understand that uh, research studies are ongoing as to the impact of um, the uh, Delta uh, variant on existing vaccines that we are taking. I understand that experts are still looking at it. You, you touched on it. We'll look at it a bit more. Dr. Boyo, um, the other uh, insidious thing about this, if that is the word, is that um, they say it is almost symptom-free. Uh, could, could you sort of clarify that? Uh, the, I've seen some, some things going around on social media, no cough, no this, no that, yet you might have it. Please talk to us on, on the whole matter about how the symptoms differ from what we have come to learn uh, about how to identify possible uh, infections of COVID-19. Yes, let me start by saying it's not symptom-free. If it's symptom-free, then we will say you are, you are you know, asymptomatic COVID-19. So there will be no news about that. Okay. Yeah. So we have people that are asymptomatic mm -hmm. and are testing positive. So what they mean by that, what most people mean by symptom-free, is that what we are, they are saying is not the classical COVID-19 symptoms that we saw in the first and second wave. You know, so we have people now who are just totally weak, very, very weak, and um, and um, and um, headache, severe headache, and they are unable to sleep. Many of them just can't, they have loss of appetite, and the loss of smell has not been so significant. Um, they have running noses, cough, not as bad, but there's cough too. Right? See, like we say, nobody, no, not everybody will have the same symptoms. The commonest trait we see in Nigeria here, actually in, in practice, is people who are very, very weak. I see one out of three, very, very weak, and um, they are doing joint pains, and when they go for this COVID-19 PCR test, it turns out to be negative. So the question is, are we releasing COVID-19 because it's negative by the test, but the symptoms are so classical that they don't even respond to the common anti-malaria. So mm -hmm. when I give them um, um, atomicin combination therapy, quinine, no response. So it takes a turn over about 21 days before they get better. So over the last two, three weeks, many doctors have been raising alarm that there's something going on here we're seeing a strange form of disease it's not a classical COVID with temperatures of course they used to have temperatures at times but not the same as in COVID and then the lung features and also strongly cough and we find them going to these ventilators and things like that but you see like what um, Dr. Tui said um, we're now having a, a variant that can attack the younger population and that's, that's what our demographics fall into Number two, like he also said, the, the symptoms of such that are people who say it's malaria. Before they come to us, really, they must have taken anti-malaria, taken analgesics, and even tired of being treated with malaria from, from the native treatment of Dongoyaro to anything before they come to see the doctor. Mm -hmm. And when they come to, we even do the malaria parasite test, and we get just one plus, and it's not enough to cause such grief, grief, grievous illness. And then we test them. Okay. COVID-19 negative. Okay. And so when they say don't treat people with such things, because they are not ne they are negative, we find it because we refer them to their solution centers. Are you mm. getting my point? Mm. So at the end of the day, they have symptoms. But let me round up with this. These symptoms are very much, uh, we are very much used to them because in Nigeria, the week is not a strength pain. We are used to malaria, things that look like malaria with headache, running nose, and so strength. So people tend to stay at home. Okay. And don't forget, we are very positive. We don't want to say that I'm sick. So we tend to stay at home and say, just <laughs> ordinary malaria until it becomes very, very serious. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Madi Obi, could you help us understand how this particular uh, virus, uh, I wouldn't say works, fights mm -hmm. differently from what we have been told? I'm talking about the physiology now, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, that before the young seem to be partially immune. Now we're saying that is not the case anymore. Uh, I'm hearing about its, its mode of attack is different. Uh, Non-medical people that have spoken to me have said that it goes straight into the lungs. Could, could you clarify that whole bit up, please? How is the uh, mode of attack of this particular Delta variant uh, different on the human body? 
Um, can I touch a little bit on what Dr. Boyo said there? Uh, I'm not in Nigeria, Please. but there, there, there's something that is a little bit uh, alarming about what he just said. Please go ahead. Um, there, there's a set of symptomatology that seems to not fit particularly with COVID, and it's COVID PCR negative. Um, I would say that it's a, re a reportable situation if it if it isn't if it's COVID PCR negative. Um, I would say we are looking at something that is a little bit different. I would I would investigate that further and find out exactly what it is. Okay. It may not necessarily be Delta variant. Um, another thing I would like to also mention is that this third wave is a little bit different from the previous two waves. There is a large, a high level of infection, but level of hospitalization, especially in the uh, in Europe and North America, is much lower, and level of mortality is much lower. Now there could be a lot of factors that would have led to that probably as a result of increased vaccinations or others. But this, this we still need to find out why. Mm. The good news is that although there has increased infectivity, there has reduced hospitalization and death. Now, in terms of the physiology uh, of, of the disease itself and why the Delta variant is different, uh, this is something that is currently still being studied. There, there's no real clarity about why that is, but usually with these variants, many of them occur on, uh, uh, on a regular basis, but it becomes a variant of concern like this of Delta that has decreased infectivity. Um, why that happens is not known, but there is one thing that is very, very important to note. These variants are more common in those who haven't been vaccinated. So in situations where there are reduced amounts of vaccination, uh, the variants try because there's increased R rate, there's increased infectivity, and they have uh, the capacity to uh, increase their uh, evolution or, or, or genetic variants. So these would be important factors to look into in terms of trying to control this. Okay. Lockdown would be an option when you don't have vaccination, but uh, it's important to hit on the fact that vaccination is important to control the situation. Mm. Mm. And uh, Dr. Mebaudu, um first of all, do you have any comments on your professional colleagues here uh, between Dr. Madi and uh, Dr. Boyo? I, well, no, 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 uh, no comments that's, that's so different from what they're saying. Because let, let's face it, um, one of the key challenges we face here is one, capacity to test. Um, normally, you should be able to deploy the tests um, to as many population as possible. That's why we're not getting that figure. And then that t tend to mask actually the number of people with that disease. Yes, um, quite a lot of people present with malaria-like symptoms, which you, know, you do tests, is malaria is negative. You do more tests, malaria is negative. And then you're wondering what exactly is wrong. Um, uh, thirdly, we know that as much as possible, all the non-pharmaceutical intervention we're pushing is being violated here and there. And then even at that level, we're creating situation for increased cases and mutation. Because one of the things that helps help mutation is this. If you have quite a large number of people infected, mm -hmm. the likelihood of getting mutation is higher. If people are not vaccinated, the likelihood of getting mutation is higher. But all over um, human history, the best way we've used to fight pandemic is to get a vaccine. And then here we are, we're having a lot of negative conversation, negative narration as far as the vaccine is concerned. The information is not properly managed. So, but even when people are ready to take the vaccine, availability became a, a, a challenge. So now, within the mix, what do we now look at? We, you know, yes, two twin action, you look at how to further the communicate or stimulate the communication well. on prevention, Okay, no physical prevention. And then you also look at it that how do we get vaccine at all costs? Okay. Um, um, and uh, stay with us, please. We'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. It's this morning on TVC. And um, we are here in the studio with Dr. Tui Mebamodu, as well as uh, online with Dr. Madeli Boyo, public health consultant, and Dr. Ajoku Amadiobi, who is um, joining us uh, all the way from Ireland. Um, um, Dr. Boyo, uh, this has been called, um, we, it's, it's been reported in Oyo State, it's been reported in Lagos State. The governors of both states have put out um, statements in the nature of advisories, uh, sort of cluing us in on to what's going on. And also, the, uh, in fact, uh, one paper says that um, the dreaded Delta variant hits uh, Oyo as Lagos slips into third wave. 
Uh, I don't know whether we are at a third wave yet, um, but uh, Dr. Boyer, you've been very, very vocal uh, about the things to do, that we need to do, all these precautions uh, as our contribution to the fight against COVID-19, back from when the um, uh, virus was first introduced to us. Now, uh, I was saying earlier that um, our people have relaxed a bit, if nothing more uh, than psychologically, in terms of you know how we engage with this disease. Um, we, are you? I'm sort of working out that from what you've said before, and all your medical professionals have also been saying, now more than ever before, we need to abide by those guidelines: appropriate distancing, washing hands frequently. You know the whole bag. Is that the case, Dr. Boyo? Okay, we've lost Dr. Boyo, but um, uh, Dr. Amadi will be just to test the system. Uh, Dr. Bad Amadi, uh, uh, are you still there with us? Okay, uh, Dr. Tui, may uh, Bangodu. Yes, yes, that is the case. Um, and even more vigilant this time. Uh, okay, please continue. Are you not hearing me? Yeah, yeah uh, now I can. Now I can. I think there was a lag. Oh dear. I called on all of you. Meanwhile, there was a lag. So let me start again with Dr. Boyo. Go ahead, Dr. Boyo. Hello? I'm hearing you. I can hear you now. I know we're hearing, but you're the one hearing us. Go ahead, Dr. Boyo. Yes. Looks like you're muted there. TVC News planning is, I don't, I'm not sure why that. Oh dear, I, I think there's a very big uh, delay that is looking like four or five seconds, which is really messing things up. Normally, if the delay were uh, standard, you know, like you know, one or two, but I think there's a big, big delay because um, I could actually begin to hear questions that I put about four or five seconds ago. Um, coming back up. So, sorry, we'll sort of sort that out. Um, our technical guys will let me know when that has been sorted. But in the meantime, um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Boya actually did get the question, even if he did, did get it late. Uh, but I was wondering if the precautions are now more important uh, in terms of their being observed than before. Well, well um, essentially, what had, what happened after the lull of the second wave was that the, the conversation on COVID-19 kept receding from the public space. Um, um, different governors, different um, figures that used to be the incident commanders receded, and they were talking about different things entirely. And that gave an impression that the COVID is gone. So, um, and then we opened up the, econ the, the economy, we opened up the space, and then, lo and behold, April, the data variants entered Uganda, before you know it, in 22 African countries. Now, it's heartwarming to know that um, Doc, um, Mr. Wolu, the governor of Lagos State, as well as the back, governor of Oyo State, they're back now to the, for, for, for the conversation, to embrace the conversation on COVID-19, okay. especially the data variant, which is essential. That is, inform, conversation, information, discussion is the first step. Indeed. It's the first step. Okay. You know, to, now, to, now, to, to the, signal. The other doctors are online. I understand they've sort of um, blown the cobwebs out of um, the um, wires. Okay. So now there you are, Dr. Boyo. So you heard the question the first time, but couldn't respond to it. So please go ahead, Dr. Boyo. Yes. I, I was saying that um, we, we let down our guards because the way everybody behaves, even in parts in power, and the ordinary citizens copy them, it was perceived this thing had gone for good. And uh, most places had opened up fully, the um, weddings, burials, and churches, everybody was up and around. And now it has caught us. Now, I don't know how we're going to get people to go back to the former state again. But the truth is, the levels of admissions are rising, and the symptoms we are seeing are giving us concern. And funny enough, we still have a very low vaccination level. I think we have like 1%. We should be at 60% minimum, if not 70%. But even those who have taken the just one dose of the vaccine, we've not crossed 5%. Yeah. And that's a very important thing. Listen to what Dr. Amadi just said. He said, if you have been vaccinated, you will not have, you, I mean, the problem is with those who have not been vaccinated. And that's where our challenges are. We don't have enough people in this country who have been vaccinated. 
And before, you know, we said we can vaccinate people that are above 50, 55. But all over the world now, the younger people are being vaccinated because they found out that they were now the asymptomatic carriers. And as it turned out now, if you look at America, those states with low vaccination rates are worse hit. So we need to revamp vaccination. We need to do the all the physical distancing, washing of hands, and all those things. We need to go there again. But most importantly right now for me is for us to increase vaccination. Because even on Monday this last week, by last week, Wednesday, vaccination has stopped in Lagos because they had, have finished those who came for the second vaccination. They haven't given those who are not even taken at all. Yeah. Like they had to stop. Okay. So we need to work and revamp vaccination. Mm. Uh, Dr. Madiobi, if you can hear me. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you, you being over there in the UK, um, I, I'm looking at what's happening. Uh, the big sports event yesterday, uh, we saw on television pictures that you know uh, it's like the world wants to get back to normal and um governments haven't looked at it no doubt very very seriously have decided that um you know they they're sort of pulling down all the scaffolding that we had erected in our <laughs> the construction of our mm, protective edifice against covid 19 uh bars can open uh, you, you know the whole shebang um now with a, with an event like the football fans that were seen yesterday, uh, I don't know, how, how dangerous do you think that is? Uh, I know they are testing, but what do you think? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I guess policymakers are really uh, left in a very difficult position because society has to start opening again. Uh, uh, the uh, Prime Minister of the UK is of the opinion that society should open and they are, uh, on the 19th are going to try and... Uh, implement that um it's very challenging because the scientists are telling you to go <laughs> to stay yes yeah. uh, the scientists are saying that we'll regret it down. scientists are saying yes. flatly that we will regret it if we go the way we are going yes um and uh, but but uh, I, I i'm not exactly sure whether that no, nobody really knows because that hasn't <laughs> really been panned out nobody has done that the yes. closest you would see to that would be sweden this is, uh, which which was a little bit more flexible with their lockdown. Uh, there has been uh, an increase, of course, in mortality and morbidity, but not as dramatic as uh, most scientists had predicted. So, uh, really, uh, if, uh, what uh, the UK is doing is uncharted territory. Uh, but they have the advantage of having had a very significant amount of vaccine rollout. So that yes, would really yes, be yes. It, 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 a totally different situation in Nigeria, for example, okay. where... Uh, the level of uh, vaccination is very low. The coverage is about five uh, percent, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably much less than that. But one thing we haven't really taken into consideration is what is the level of natural immunity in Nigeria? If you add natural immunity with, with vaccination, that is really the total number that you should be calculating for herd immunity to be able to allow people to get out of society. If we are, if we knew the number of people. The a level of infection in Nigeria, we might actually be able to get a handle on when would be the best time to open or not. Mm -hmm. Because those who have acquired natural immunity uh, also have a, a level of immunity. Uh, we are not even sure how it compares with vaccination. Uh, but those would be things that you would need to take into consideration. Okay. Uh, Nobody is actually looking at that a lot now. Oh, okay. Let me ask Dr. Mebawadu about that and subsequently Dr. Boyo. This natural immunity thing and um, uh, the, uh, the, the numbers that we have to reach to have uh, acquired an acceptable level of uh, herd uh, immunity in terms of vaccination. But uh, talk about that natural immunity because I believe that a lot of Nigerians, they might not even be watching this program, young, you know, not too highly educated, they're actually depending on this natural uh, 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 immunity. As a, I, but I know it has a proper classical uh, definition. But m a lot of Nigerians are saying, hey, you see, they are saying it. They say we have the natural immunity. Uh, explain that, that bit, lest we I, I, run away I, I, with I that. I think we shouldn't be deceived. Now, if you're looking at uh, the dynamics of what is going to confound to you a natural immunity, first and foremost, your level of nutrition is key to evoke those immune cells that will pr give you protection when you have the infection. Uh, if you look at Nigeria, malnutrition, as much as uh, 90 something million people malnourished, that's uh, for children 14 million. And then you are looking at those things, you are looking at all the challenges of food supply, you are looking at challenges of um, other infections, 
you know, running in the country. Yeah, Nigeria should not be a country that will be looking at natural immunity as a means mm -hmm. of containing the virus. Mm -hmm. Rather, we should look for vaccine. Anyway, we can find the vaccine mm -hmm. and push for 6 to 70 percent vaccination so that we can get the herd immunity that we so desire. But at the moment, at we're somewhere around uh, what? One percent. We're oh, one percent. Not we're even five. No, 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 not five. I was we're, too ambitious. We're one percent. We're one percent. Because and, and they say the UK is uh, something like what? Eighty percent? Eighty, seventy, eighty. Israel is even closer to uh, that. Eighty percent. So now, uh, now, so the, the the key issue is that if we desire to open up this economy, if we desire to reduce mortality and mobility, mm -hmm. reduce economic anguish occasioned by this virus, mm -hmm. we need to embrace vaccination. We need to find vaccines by all means. Okay, one moment please, Dr. Mebaudu. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and greetings to your guests. Good morning. Uncle Yori, I would like our three doctors to please, in simple language, explain to people what variant means in this uh, COVID-19. So many people do not understand it. it, it the way they are using it is a medical jargon. People, the average man on the street doesn't really know what a variant means. They should please use plain words to explain it. <laughs> That's one. Okay. The second thing is, the Americans are already talking about the third dose. And is it, a, they call it booster dose. Is it also relevant for us? Uh, for example, we are taking the two, uh, you know, doses. With this variant that we are talking about, how do we, how do we key in? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Doc, uh, Mr. George. Um, well, actually, uh, maybe you didn't join us from the top, uh, because um, uh, Dr. Madio B, for instance, has uh, um, uh, spoken about this, that um, uh, quite frankly, the medical community doesn't know yet and is studying the matter, uh, is studying the issue. But uh, I don't know if... Um, uh, le but let me let Dr. Boyo pick that up. Dr. Yes, Boyle. thank you very much. I think the first thing is that um, the word variant simply means the thing COVID-19 um, presenting the, because they sequence the genes and when they do it, when you sequence, you now find that there's something strange about the genetic make okay. of this particular uh, virus. Uh, doctor, uh, if, think, if if Mr. George complained about uh, variant, I think he's also going yeah, to complain about sequence yeah, and uh, what was that other side? No, that's, yeah, that's why I said it's still the same COVID-19, but let's say it's, it's a brother, it's a sister related. It's, it's another form. It's yeah, another, another form. form. That's what I'm saying, yes. So by the point here is that they found this one in South Africa, there's a UK variant, there's a South African variant, there's an Asian name we had. So in some countries of the world, they study this, this, this virus and part wow. This COVID 19, but this particular one seems to be a bit different. Okay. It's the same COVID 19. So it's simple. It's like. Be, uh, uh, so, sorry, for the, sorry for the unprofessional sort of interpretation, but it's like a snake. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's, a snake is a snake. And they might have different uh, properties, but a snake is a snake. So I'm saying that COVID, this is still COVID, the variant is the form it let, takes. Let, let, but let, me, let me give you a second. This one is trying to more deadly, Go ahead. spreads faster, more potent, and this is the problem now. If it was coming in and it was less potent, we can say a snake is a snake. Okay. This one now is, like was said earlier on by my colleague, yeah. the greater delay we had was that we didn't hit even 40% vaccination. And he did say something very significant. Unlike other countries in the world, we still have poor access to healthcare, we are still having more malnourished because uh, 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 immunity is based on nutrition. Yeah. If you are malnourished, you can't have immunity. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people in this country who are not well fed. We have people in this country without access to medical care, without access to testing. So if you look at the other countries that did well. So the, the immune one, system, the immune system is key, is paramount. Um, yes, and yes, you've been talking about that. Could I just interrupt yes, you for yes, a yes. moment because I've got to bring in Reverend Dominic who has come on the line. Uh, good morning, Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Yori. Yeah, thank you for calling in. Please, I would like the three medical doctors to clarify the doubt I have. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please, I want, to, I want to, the, the three medical doctors to clarify this. In Nigeria here, there is one of our brother governors, the governor of Kogi State, which has said it loud and clear that there is no COVID in Kogi State. And you're in, see, today, statistics have not caught him wrong. Even other states are testing and giving us one, two, three, ten, five. 
have not had to give state one or two or massive death in two give states because he said there's no COVID. And uh, today, statistics are not quoting wrong. That are not quoting wrong. It means if you believe it, you have it. If you don't believe it, you don't have it. Could that uh, clarify this? Lagos have been fighting it. Today, it's 10 in Lagos, it's 100, it's, two, it's 50, it's 70. But there's no one in Kogi. Okay. The government said there's no uh, COVID uh, in Kogi. Let, 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 let me look at that. Let, 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 me, let me try and <laughs> look at that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, starting from home. Yeah, uh, again, I, I need to do a bit of clarification. I want Mr. George and this Reverend to listen. Yes. Um, first and foremost, let the variance, let me define the variance as simple as possible. Now, you have a paper, you want to make photocopies of um, a document, and you push like uh, three reams of paper into the photocopy machine and they're making copies. You are likely to see mistakes of the same document you are making. There will be variation, there will be variation in, in the reproduced the, in image. Reproduce image. And that's what is happening in the virus. Mm -hmm. The virus uses the human body to make copies of itself. Okay. In the process, make mistake in the copy. Okay. Some of those copies that made them are actually more wicked than the original one. Mm -hmm. Some are, most of them are actually, you know, okay. weaker. Okay, all right. So I, that's I, I think that's, exactly that's so sucking. Yeah, yeah. That's sucking. Now, now, talking about Kogi State Governor, and his own let me come to that please let me just add this other call that's coming in because it's a matter of what's going on in kogi so hold your thoughts on that please uh good morning uh kiss and do thank you for calling in good morning to the doctors yeah i want to ask a very uh, straight question you know that we are being faced with this this pandemic now leveraging the whole nation the delta what variant actually, yes the delta variant now, what advice do they actually have for the government? Because no matter how we see this thing, other countries are actually encouraging their people. The, this vaccine that we're talking about was actually produced by people. And I know God has actually blessed us with human and natural resources. So what, else, what advice do they actually have for the government on how we can actually come in worse? Because I know that this thing is some kind of peculiar. The, the way it's going to affect somebody in India will not be the same way it will affect somebody in Nigeria. Okay. What are we doing, or what are we supposed to do to see how we can actually take care of Nigeria? These are these what government can actually do to encourage our health as us in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Kesandu, for calling in. But um, uh, um, first of all, you know that the um, uh, uh, the NC uh, uh, the National Council for you know. Uh, Infectious diseases. NCDC. Uh, NC, NC, NCDC. Uh, it, it put out the statement that it was among us, and I think um, uh, among the things that Kesandu m might be thinking about is information. People just need to be informed. Um, so it, you can we can develop on that, but I don't want to lose track of you are going to comment on Kogi, and then uh, this whole. <laughs> you see, anytime we go to health matters, the calls come fast and thick. And uh, before you finish one sentence, Mazi Okoro has called in from Arochuku. Good morning, Mazi. Good morning, Sayori. Good morning, the chief doctor from program. Good morning. Yes. Uh, doctor. Go on, please. The doctor's mentioned joint pain. But now, doctor, how do we differentiate atrocitis pain? and then um, better variants pain that's number one we should go back to the 50s when we are talking about this issue of um, covid 19 and uh, the government the governor actually they got to say they're going back to 60 city arrangements will it work that's another question now the issue of a uh, natural immune system report has come to make that that beta leaves and certainly boost immunity. Is it true or wrong? And if it's true, what advice will you tell the people who don't like bitter leaf and the saint leaf? I'm saying you because um, uh, yeah, Mazi, Mazi, le, 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 let's run with what you've given us. Let's run with what you've given us. Um, and they are piling up. Um, I, I want to go back to Kogi. Yes, uh, yes. I want to go back to Kogi. Kogi, according to the government there, does not have a single case of COVID-19. Uh, Briefly, please. Well, we, we don't want to turn this into remember, a program. We mm. should remember that at the beginning of this COVID pandemic, Kogi states refused to test. Yes. They refuse and, and, and it has you, refused to report. You cannot detect what you are not testing. Yes. So what you are seeing, Kogi, exactly is a case of not testing. 
Okay. I, you see, I, 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 I don't want to go further, doctor. Denier. I don't want to go Once further, you doctor. Test, you will see the cases. Let me stay with that yes. scientific uh, point Simple. that you have yes. made. You can only detect a thing if you test for it. Um, uh, 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 the question has also been asked about identifying how, how, how do you identify the Delta variant? Uh, the Delta variant from the regular variant. Genomic sequencing. You see, you know, science is specific language. I know. We understand that. So, you know, because when we do, we do what we call genomic sequencing, you look at the genes of this virus and figure out that this one is a bit different from this. And you can only do that genomic sequencing in a few laboratories in Nigeria. You understand? So, again, what we need to do is to step up our surveillance, what we call genomic surveillance, that's at the level of government. If you are looking at what government should and do. And that's what that's NCDC... That's at the level of government. You, you set up genomic surveillance. I think that's what NCDC then, said it had done and was therefore able to report yes, categorically exactly, exactly. that we do exactly. have the Delta then, variant. Then, when you're talking about what government should do, then we should raise up the communication at the level of the state government. We shouldn't be acting like Kogi State who's denying the virus. Okay. We should raise up the discussion at the level of state government and individuals. I said, listen, this is where we are. Help us to help you. Um, uh, well, Do Dr. Madiobi, I, I don't know, I don't think you wanted to comment on the whole matter about um, uh, Koki State, be you not being on ground, as it were, or would you, did you have, to comment on it? Yes. did you have one or two comments? Oh, oh, so, so uh, I, I, I just checked the NCDC site. Yes, yes. There's, uh, they, they have confirmed some cases of uh, COVID <laughs> in Koki State, so I, I'm, it's a bit confusing to say there isn't. Okay, initially, so, uh, yeah, Dr. Boyo, please go ahead, Dr. Yeah. Boyo. Uh, 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 Kogi State had COVID. In fact, you know, I was among those who protested when Kogi wanted to now get vaccinations. And okay, okay. Program, so what are, you, what, what are you vaccinating what against? against? Yes, but like I said, what our colleagues have said is this. Testing, more testing, and more testing. And then vaccinations. Okay. We need to spend our energies on getting every adult above the age of 50 vaccinated in this country. And then we should, because we didn't have enough vaccine. That's the beginning of the problem. Okay. We didn't have enough. And now, doctor, so so, sorry to, let me jump in, doctor. I beg your pardon. Different types of vaccine. I beg your pardon, doctor. Let me jump in. Let, let me jump in with another viewer question. Uh, so, uh, how, how do you now identify or distinguish, differentiate between the two vaccines? Even though Mr. George, our a regular viewer, doesn't like those highfalutin scientific terms, I've been hearing that it's genome, genome yeah, sequencing. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's not here. You don't do genome sequencing on individuals. Mm -hmm. Just in clinic somewhere. The first thing to do is make sure you don't catch any symptoms of COVID. Forget about the name. Just stop physical, um, ensure physical distancing, ensure washing of your hands, ensure masking. Forget the name. Just look at the symptoms. If you are sick, go to the nearest hospital and get treated. Stop excellent excellent advice medication. excellent advice except that they say that it doesn't present in exactly the same way before uh the sickness you have go to the hospital what i present that way i'm not more interested in semantics if you are sick and you can you find that you, you, are, you have tried to do which will discourage the advice is after two days consult your doctor no if you are sick in most countries in the world if you have a temperature you go to the hospital. Okay. It's only Nigeria. Uh, 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 excellent. Uh, excellent. You don't uh, 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 Mr. Yakub, uh, uh, thank you. Our apologies for holding on for so while, for such a long while. But we wanted the doctors and the experts to get their stuff out of the way to you know open up a pathway for questioning. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I understand. Good morning, sir, and then good morning to doctors. Yes. Uh, I want to. I want the doctors to clarify this thing to us. Uh, number one, there are some people that have already taken uh, the first dose and then they given them the date, went back to the place and then they were told that the pharmacy is not available. Uh, does it mean that if you took the first dose and then uh, you need to go back in the next month as given to you by them and then getting there they say that uh, the, the dose is not available uh, and then it took another like three, four months before you can get the second dose. Is it going to work like, say, you take the second dose? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Yakub. I've got to interrupt there. Thank you very much. I got the question. Uh, Dr. Amadi what would be your comment on this whole matter about um, uh, not being able to complete the dose within the recommended time frame? 
Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question and I'll make a comment about some important uh, question that was asked before that wasn't talked about. Yes. Uh, now, in terms of whether you have one or two, uh, you, you, are, you are considered immunized when you've had the two vaccines, two weeks after you've had the two vaccines. Now, if you've had one vaccine, it gives you a level of immunity much better than if you don't, if you haven't had any vaccine at all. So it's better to have one rather than to uh, uh, have none at all. Okay. Now, in the question of whether it is delayed or not, in some cases uh, where the vaccines have been delayed, for example, the Pfizer one, they found that the level of immunity that is after eight weeks or so, uh, you give the first one and then wait for about eight weeks, mm. is actually better. Mm. So uh, the most important thing is that you've had one. So when you get the second one, is uh, uh, well, will depend on availability. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is because somebody mentioned natural immunity and the, and the bitter leaf. Oh, okay. I think... I think it's very important that we clarify something about natural immunity, since I was the one that brought up the issue of natural immunity. Natural immunity means that you've had the infection and survived it, and you've developed an immunity, so you're not likely to develop it again, or a severe version of it again. Okay. It doesn't mean that if you haven't had an infection before, you can take better leave and improve your natural immunity. Thank you, you very much. You do not have natural immunity if you haven't had an infection. Thank you very much for that clarification, Doctor. Um, the natural immunity, as doctors use the term, is all about having survived COVID-19, and as a result of that, you do have some properties for having come through it. If you've never had COVID-19, uh, don't talk about natural immunity. Don't be mixing it up with uh, things like we're talking about now, which is the... Um, uh, the, the um, immune system, doing our best to keep it very vigorous and strong. Now, um, uh, Dr. Boyo, uh, uh, your thoughts, please, on, on this whole, uh, on, on that whole question, if you will. That is the question yeah. about yes. um, one, one, one out of two and not being able to get the second within the time frame. What are your observations locally? Yes, yes. There, are many of, there are many people that went back for the second vaccine. The first thing is the Nigerian factor. When they were supposed to come back, it's written on the vaccination card. When had a problem. People did not follow that. Then, when they went back, we went back late. The question is, why do we do that? Let's keep to appointment. But then, like my colleague said, if we had just one vaccine, if we had 60% of Nigerians just had one vaccine, it would not be where we are today. The problem is that we have zero vaccine. Among 1% of 200, imagine we are 200 million, 1% of 200 million is just 20 million. Yeah. I mean, 2 million. 2 million. In 2 million. Testimony. 10 percent of 200 million is 20 million. Hmm. We're trying to reach 70 percent, which is 140 million people. We didn't get there. So we're just at 2 million. And that's shameful. Hmm. And it's not because of the government, it's because people did not, there were conspiracy theories on the social media, and people were following that. And two, uh, demographics. If we're at 200 million, those that qualify for the vaccine will not be 200 million because 70% of Nigerians or even 80% are below the age of 40. Okay. So if you need 20% of above 50, we're talking about 20 times 2. We're talking about 40 million. Mm -hmm. we, didn't even, we didn't even reach there. Okay. So we have only 1 million. So the first thing we do in Nigeria is say, if you are elderly, if you are, if you are, if you are a health worker, you work in isolation centers, then come out for the vaccine. These are the people that came out at first. So the amount of vaccine available and the push that we gave in this country was so much like the older people. Now we have found that in other countries in the world, even teenagers are beginning to have the vaccine. Okay. So let's go back to the drawing board. More testing, more vaccines were available, and let people get more vaccinated. Because um, we are very restless in this country. Okay, okay, and doctor. Okay, doctor. Uh, coming, co coming to Dr. Mebaudu, and so from all... Uh, what you experts have been talking about now, uh, and a question that was raised by one of our viewers, Mr. George, you're calling in from Ikeja. You don't have to really know what it means and what it works. What you need to know is that even though it's a very technical terminology as well, a virus, you know, you don't need to know what it is and how it works to know that it's bad for you and that these are the things to do to protect yourself from this particular sickness that they say is caused by a virus. And so now that we have this um, uh, Delta variant with us, now that we have this Delta variant um, with us, uh, uh, now that we have this Delta uh, va va variant with us, we have to... Uh, you know, just do all those things again uh, in, in a heightened sort of way. Boost your immune, immune system as much as you can, according to how your doctors tell you uh, that this can help and that can help. Then don't expose yourself, such as 
I saw you, you saw the football crowd in the UK yesterday. Yes, they were vaccinated. They are all being vaccinated. Yes, they so they have the herd immunity. Yes. So they have good reason. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But we ourselves, we have to open up our society, and there are going to be crowds I mean, like they, this. They, they, they are, so, they, they, words in that, what, what about what we can do now that the new variant is among us, at least in Oyo and in Lagos? You know, the game changer, let's be frank, don't, don't let us try to. You know, the game changer in all this COVID. Um, is for Nigeria to look for vaccines anyhow. That would be the game changer. You know, because the, the fact is this. Yes, we want you to take the personal um, um, challenge to ensure that you don't get vaccines. Mm -hmm. Social distances, wear fixed masks, mm -hmm. wash your hand, avoid crowd. Eat very well. Of course, you know how that is in Nigeria, how to eat very well. So, but the game, those things uh, very quite difficult to implement because I've not seen anybody who is not wearing face mask being prosecuted or being reprimanded anywhere. Good enough, I went to an hotel over the weekend and they were handing over face masks to those who were not having. That is a good thing. Okay. So now, and people, someone was uh, going uh, around and saying that, please put on your face mask. Yes, yes, yes. That may be nice. But are you going to do that in the marketplace? Okay. That's a challenge. Uh, Sam uh, in K2, apologies for keeping you waiting. If you're still there, good morning. Uh, good morning, Uncle Sarko, uh, Yuri. Um, I've been listening to the conversation with the doctors. First of all, the two doctors here in the country should sometimes use a very local language, what you call a pigeon, to explain to our people what they're talking about. Number two, I think we need sensitization, more information about the vaccine. Most people don't even know where to get the vaccine. Most people don't even know what the vaccine is all about. Okay. And the parents, we don't even know when and how do you get the variants. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much for calling in. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, Sam, appreciate your calling in. Um, there are specialist programs that speak pidgin, uh, and no doubt they are going to be on it as well. Uh, but this is a, you know, it's a different kind of a program. I hear what you say. Also, some people call in, nevertheless, uh, even though it's not a pidgin based program, but even if pidgin is all that you can speak, you can call in and speak about it. Uh, we will be more than willing to uh, accept it. Um, uh, the, the program has been, even if I say so myself, quite comprehensive with between the three doctors in informing us about things that we could um, uh, make mistakes about. And in fact, we've really uh, run out of time. But the, um, the, the thing to know is that, yep, COVID-19, the dreaded Delta variant, to, to be quoting one newspaper, the dreaded Delta, I think they like the alliteration yeah. of the Ds. No, it's, you know, it's, it's that, definitely dreaded. It you is know, dreaded. That was what led to the, the problem in India. Okay. So, so it's we, actually dreaded. There's no doubt about that. We well, don't want it to be here. Indeed. And we don't want it to really get to that level of India in this place. Indeed. And uh, uh, we, 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 bear, we bear a responsibility for this by our behavior. Whether it factors into what governments and other doctors are trying to do for us, we also have a responsibility, I think, is the main important point. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Tui, maybe I'll do. Uh, we've got to leave it here. Uh, and also, let me express my appreciation to Dr. Boyo and Dr. Ahoko Amadi Obi. Uh, both of you gentlemen, thank you very much for thank joining you. us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right, thank then. You, uh, th thanks once again, um, Dr. Meba Odu. So that's our program where you know you know now that it's, it's back among us and um, we have to do all we can to keep safe. You know, just keep all those protocols, and um, I'm sure, you know, God will be kind. Okay, that's our program. See us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.